Hey guys, G Choi here of the House of Black Kind Study. How y'all doing today? Uh, this is way overdue, so I'm just getting around to it. Obviously, first of all, my apologies to Mr. Kurtz. Uh, sir, super sorry for the delay of this review, but in my excuse, Corbett. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. Uh, last year, due to Corbett rampancy, I, I wasn't able to get the review done, obviously, because I couldn't get anyone to come in for training. But same here today, but today I just wanted to get this out there because one, I've been getting a lot of recommended requests from a lot of my students asking, hey G, what do you recommend for everyday carry defensive tool? Now, those of you who know me and train with me know that I don't recommend carrying anything that's specifically purpose intended for self-defense because that goes into premeditation unless it's something that is acknowledged by the law to carry for self-defense such as concealed carry weapons like pistols if you have a if your state permits you to carry a pistol uh, pistol concealed by a concealed pistol license those things totally legal but remember look into your jurisdiction because many of you don't know that uh, some of you might carry a collapsible baton but you'll be shocked to find that under your state's registration um, it specifically states that it might not be permitted as a bludgeon or a telescopic baton or nightstick and they'll actually specifically state the tool at task so check into that before you decide to carry now with this this is by Mr. Thomas Kurt of Unbreakable Umbrella I'll leave the link on the page if possible by YouTube but if not simply Google unbreakable umbrella and you'll see one of these I'm trying to get the close up in this remember guys I'm not too good on the cameras but try my best now this rubber tip is removable but and it actually has a very pointy tip but I put this on there because one obvious reason <laughs> for everyday carry now it is not some weird uh, defensive tool in a shape of an umbrella it actually is a very functioning umbrella as you can see now beauty for me is I live in Washington State and if you guys know Washington State we get quite a bit of rain here so for me this just makes a perfect sense to carry as an everyday tool that if shit hits the fan I can pull it out and use it in a defensive manner some of you might wonder, isn't this too weak to actually do any defensive things with it? You'd be surprised what you can do with some bit of training. And that's where I'm going to actually direct you to my teacher, Raymond Floral's Floral Online. Now, Ray's got a wonderful course that, just a simple action, all the courses are wonderful. Shout out to my brother, Ray. How are you, bro? Hope everything's well. Um, the thing that I would recommend, everything on Ray's courses are great and they work. That's the reason why I, I'm a li literally a lifelong fanatic of floral fighting systems and will be forever floral fighting systems practitioner. Now, but you can always find that through experiencing by coming in for sparring and I'll be more than happy to share that with you. Well, online courses, uh, Ray's got those models which actually does specifically focus on utilizing such as tools like this for actual two-handed application. Now, those of you who know me know that I come with a classical choreo background, Japanese martial arts. And for me to convert over to floral fighting systems two-handed uh, weapons method, it's kind of unique because I grew up typically holding a sword in this manner, with a Japanese sword. In FFS, it is slightly changed to allow, it took me about week, two weeks to actually fully modify myself to getting used to this technique. And I found that I could generate more power with it because I have my dominant hand on the bottom. I won't go further into detail because this can be explained by Ray himself on the course. So check that out if you guys are looking for a defensive manner with this. Now. Going back to the question, isn't this too weak to do any significant defensive striking with? No. You should see Mr. Curse's demonstration on what he does with this on like inanimate objects like a uh, punching bag and other things that he's slamming this hard and just doesn't take much damage to it. Now, because of that, 
that's awesome. But for me, what I would recommend utilizing this is you can obviously use it like a swing in this manner and that will work too. And Ray will go in depth with the those models method if you go on the online courses. There's also Fairbairn and Sykes that Ray has specific illustrated on military cane method. Check that out. That's actually a good example of this too for defensive manner. But for this one, what I believe is what I personally think is probably the coolest is one, you could use this for counter knife, what to do, like dealing with attackers with knives. Because one, I'm just I'm not gonna go into a lot of it, I'm just gonna show one. Imagine this, so typical in Filipino martial arts manner, if somebody comes at you with angle one, you could either pass that, lock it, and do all sorts of crazy things, but you're also vulnerable if you don't time it well, or if your opponent pulls the blade in, retracts it too fastly, he could also get you in return cut. With this kind of thing, going into this, what I love about this method is, one, you can slam that away from you, too. If he's coming for an angle, too, you don't have to really change it. You can strike it, and one of the things that I'm noticing when I'm doing this, with a shorter tool, I'll be aiming for the center to block it off and punch it off like this. With a tool like this, I grasp it here at center, and I could actually attack the attack for a real quick disarm. No BS. And one of the things is why with this arm is when I struck most of my students when I was doing this, I've had one student where I nailed the dead center on the wrist and that was with a sparring buffer. I'm gonna bring one out so I can show you here. So if I can make someone drop their tool using like slashing the buffer and this is also utilizing Mr. Curse's unbreakable umbrella shaft and making that into a sparring buffer and this thing is phenomenal. Many thanks to you again, Mr. Curse. Thank you, and sorry for the super delay <laughs> review of this. So you can utilize this to disarm instead of utilizing something like this at a center for shorter tools. If I was carrying around the collapsible umbrella that's about wee length right here, that's how I'd be using it, but with uh, something like this, much longer, I could actually start to use the top one third of the section to actually do the striking. And that actually is more efficient and also less dangerous for you because you've got more reach and distance versus having to come in and defend yourself at a much closer range. So there's that. Obvious benefit of a, an umbrella, that's a cane umbrella about this length. Uh, this comes around just shy about 36 inches around there. And the beauty of that is the distance and the reach. You got the reach that you could actually keep your opponent at bay. And a lot of my students often ask me, especially the older students who are in their 60s and 70s, they've been asking me, Gee, what do I do if they grab onto the other end if I try to back them off? Well, that's a good question. Beauty of that, you can bring them into you now and go for a strike this way. That was one of the very first things that I learned from Old Sensei when I was younger. Uh, I was uh, In Japanese martial art, we do have something called Jo. Joel is a multitude of things because you could use it as a stick, staff. If you know how to, you could use it like a kama, yari. It is a multi-versatile tool to the imagination. So there's that and obviously from Hakido there's also Changsu, which is a basically a similar thing but used more. Um, with Jojutsu's typical training was actually with a staff, very short staff, typical about three, short as four feet long never got above five feet if i remember correctly when i was growing up but those for older students were using the longer ones and as for changsu uh in hapkido it is commonly used with a hook cane so those of you hapkido practitioners you'll find yourself immediately at home with this with sabang danjigi and stuff like that so there's also that and ironically <laughs> All the terminology is, if you look at it, is the difference between languages. Sabang Donjigi is in Japanese, it would be Shionage. So it's pretty much the similar thing, and you can pull it off if you know how to with one of these in your hands. And same thing, you can transition it out. Next time when I get one of my students in here, I'll actually 
If they permit me, I will use them as a meat dummy and show you the demonstration on more of those techniques if you guys are interested. But for striking manner, this thing works just on that. You could use it for striking like this. Your, your lefty is the difference between classical. Um, if you are used to carrying like this, if you're a right-handed operator, you actually now have your dominant hand on the bottom and your other strong hand up on top for FFS Dos Manos method. So, won't go further into it. Check it out. Ray's got a wonderful detailed instructional course on this particular method and it is very, very effective. And one of the things that you could also take a look at is Ray is a big fan of utilizing this like when I showed this to Tim uh, right before the year end, like last year, right before we got into that whole COVID craziness, was how this can be used. And, and he said it looks like boxing. And to be honest, it actually does. It's you jab with it. You could, I won't go too much into it. At least that's kind of spoiler. So sorry. I'll let you guys check it out for yourself. But Mr. Curses, uh, wonderful and breakable umbrella. Highly recommended and endorsed here by G. Choi, Chief Instructor of the House of Black Trans Society. Get one, it is one of many reasons why I would recommend this over any other tool for defensive carry is one, it is not a purpose intended tool. What I mean by that is, yes, this can be used for self-defense, but it is an umbrella. It's an umbrella first, then a tool for self-defense. It is not something that can be seen as a usage bludgeon, meaning that it doesn't have any special features of it that will make this specifically as a bludgeon tool. It's simply what it is. It's an umbrella, but it's a strong umbrella. Is it worth the cost? Damn right, because one, you're not going to be able to break it. So for me, on that, that reason alone is actually worth more than anything. Third, it's a plain sight carrot, meaning I can carry this anywhere. I'm not going to raise an eyebrow. No one's going to say, hey, that dude has an umbrella. Yeah, but it's an umbrella. I mean, it's not like a sword stick or anything like that. It's an umbrella. That's the simplicity and the beauty of it. You can carry it and do whatever you need to. At the same time, shit hits the fan and well, you got a wonderful defensive tool that you can utilize it if you know how to. And that's where Flow of Fighting Systems Online comes in. So, check that out. Study it. Uh, for those of you local, meaning you live within Washington State and want to come by for some sparring. I am opening up the training again, and I'll put that on a separate video. It's going to be nothing. At this time, though, we got the CIA programs rolling for every system in the House of Black Trans Society. CIA, this refers to Category Instructor Accreditation. It's Train the Trainer. So those of you who are interested in learning floral fighting systems, instinctual fighting systems, comprehensive tactical solutions, become our representative in your neck of the region by all means contact me it's a three-day course four hours of training a day for three days it's heavily sparring oriented if you're going for FFS just keep that in mind so if you're going to go for flow fighting systems you got to be sparring with me for three days straight so keep that in mind if you're interested in going for that particular course all right catch you guys later uh, for Detailed questions regarding this, you could ask me on Facebook or just message me through YouTube. To purchase one of these, you can go on Mr. Curse's website, www.unbreakableumbrella.com. Alright, thank you and hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. Today is bright and beautiful.